Good morning dear children and welcome to session 4 of Sunday School. I hope you all all had a fun week. So today, before we begin with class, I want to know what you learned in class last Sunday. Anyone remembers? Yes, it was about the story of the lame man who was healed. So we understood the whole story of how the lame man was healed and we got to know the power in the name of Jesus. That in the name of Jesus, the lame man was healed and he became a follower of Jesus Christ. And likewise children, all the people out there began to praise the name of Jesus and became followers of Jesus Christ. So today, in today's class, we are going to see what happened after that. Now before we move on to that, I want to tell you all a small story on St. Bernadette and Our Lady of Lourdes. So Bernadette was born in Lourdes, France and she lived with her family in a small prison cell. Now, this was because the family was facing hard times. At a very young age, Bernadette experienced several visions of Mother Mary. So, Mother Mary appeared to Bernadette many times. And this brought a lot of joy as well as a lot of pain to young Bernadette. So, let us look at this small video clipping and understand what Bernadette experienced and all that happened in Lourdes, France. Did you know? St. Bernadette Subaru was born in Lourdes, France on January 7, 1844, almost lived in a padded cell, and did live in a jail cell. That's right, due to hard times for the Subaru family, Bernadette spent her life in a single room basement level home that formerly housed prisoners and was known as the dungeon. And the padded cell? Well, that was nearly the result of her fascinating story. From February 11th to July 16, 1858, 14-year-old Bernadette experienced 18 visions of a beautiful lady in a local grotto, and by the time of her final apparition, as many as 20,000 people had traveled to witness the events. During one vision, the lady asked Bernadette to drink from a spring in the ground, only there was no spring. So, a confused Bernadette used her bare hands to dig up the ground before finally splashing some damp mud to her mouth. This prompted many locals who could not see the lady to claim Bernadette had gone insane. But within days, a powerful spring began to flow from the muddy hole and reports of miraculous healing soon followed. Further vindicating the visions, the lady revealed her name to Bernadette as the Immaculate Conception. An 1854 dogma defined by Pope Pius IX and a phrase that Bernadette had not yet heard before. To escape her newfound and undesired fame, 22-year-old Bernadette left Lourdes to join the Sisters of Charity convent in Nevers. But upon her arrival, even the mistress of novices complained, if the Blessed Virgin wanted to appear on earth, why would she choose a coarse and uneducated peasant rather than a learned and virtuous religious? Bernadette spent the rest of her life there working primarily as an infirmary assistant. But after years of difficult health issues, including asthma, Bernadette died from tuberculosis in 1879 at only 35 years old. Amazingly, Bernadette then joined a small group of saints known as the Incorruptibles, whose bodies have refused to decompose after death. St. Bernadette's visions and lords have inspired dozens of books and four major motion pictures including 1943's Oscar-winning film, Song of Bernadette. Today in France, only Paris has more hotels than Lourdes, and more than five million pilgrims seeking healing and renewed faith visit the small town every year. 
To date, 67 people have experienced cures that the Lord's Medical Bureau has classified as inexplicable. But St. Bernadette herself said that only faith and prayer can cure, which is probably why she was named the patron saint of the sick. Bernadette was beatified in 1925, then canonized by Pope Pius XI in 1933. And while the Vatican declared the apparitions of Our Lady of Lords worthy of belief, Bernadette's canonization was not founded on the visions, but rather on the holiness she exhibited in her life. And that's how a shy young French girl became the saint we know today. So I hope you'll enjoy the video on young Bernadette and Our Lady of Lourdes. So we've seen children that Bernadette received several visions of our Blessed Lady. At one of her visions, Mother Mary asked Bernadette to drink from a nearby spring. And Bernadette was confused and she was surprised because there was no spring out there. But she used her bare hands and dug up a small hole and put the damp mud onto her mouth. But the people out there who were watching all of this were surprised and they thought that Bernadette had gone insane. But within a few days, a powerful spring began to flow from that same muddy hole and miraculous events were reported from that place. Now, in another vision, Mother Mary revealed to Bernadette her name as the Immaculate Conception. Now, this was bringing a lot of people to Lourdes, France. And hence, one day, the police commissioner asked Bernadette to report to his office. Now, Bernadette's mother was very scared. She was trembling. It was no joke for a small village girl to be going to the police commissioner's office for questioning. But Bernadette was calm and confident. So she and her mother went to the police commissioner's office. Now the police commissioner asked Bernadette to narrate the whole story to him. And he began to write down as she narrated the story. But the police commissioner was adding in his own mirch masala. Now once when Bernadette had finished narrating the story, the police commissioner read out the story back to Bernadette. But Bernadette kept stopping the police commissioner and kept telling him that it was not what she had told him. Now the police commissioner was surprised and amazed. Such a young girl being so confident about what she was saying. So... He requested Bernadette not to go up to the hill to the cave. But Bernadette said that she had to go there for 15 days. So the police commissioner said that this was useless. This promise that the young girl had made was useless because no other person was able to see. But Bernadette said that it brought her great joy. Each time she went up to the hill to that cave, that local grotto, to meet Our Lady. Now, since Bernadette was not listening, the police commissioner asked the officers to arrest Bernadette. Now, on hearing this, Bernadette's mom began to cry out loud and she, she pleaded to the police officer. She told him that she was a young girl and that she was all drained out after the two hour of questioning and to leave her. But since Bernadette was put in prison, the man, the police commissioner, was also very wise. He understood Bernadette and her confidence and later decided to release Bernadette at night. Mm -hmm. So Bernadette was released that very same night. So children, if on that night you were given a chance to talk to Bernadette, what would you like to say to her? And here's the second question. 
who do you think was more afraid young bernadette or young bernadette's mom and the third question do you think you and your friends could be as courageous and brave as young bernadette think about it so today we are going to read and understand how the apostles peter and john were arrested and later set free so we are going to be reading the book of acts chapter 4 verses 1 to 31 and the book of acts chapter 5 verses 17 to 42 so similar amount of courage was seen in the story of the lame man the apostles peter and john and the others were convinced that jesus was alive and that jesus had appeared to them the apostles were led by the holy spirit to spread the good news to all the people and nothing absolutely nothing could stop them no beating or flogging no prison no even death could stop them now the miracle of the lame man could not go unnoticed by the jewish high priest and their council they had heard about many people many jews who began to believe in the name of jesus christ and this was disturbing if god had raised jesus from the dead then the council had made a very big mistake and they were very worried now because they could lose their power and authority over the people hence they decided to arrest peter and john and they called them for questioning now do you think peter and john were afraid they were not at all afraid they were filled with joy as they stood confident in the court now the high priest asked the apostles was it you who had healed the lame man and peter replied it was in the name of jesus christ of nazareth that the lame man was restored back his health the same jesus who was crucified by you and god had raised from the dead now the high priest were amazed and surprised by what these two ordinary men had replied because they had no knowledge about the jewish law they were simple ordinary people who was st- standing with confidence and speaking to the high priest in the court and while all of this was happening the lame man entered the court and began to praise the joy in the name of jesus because he was healed now when the high priest seen this they were even more disturbed and they ordered the three of them to move out of the court now they began to discuss internally as to what is to be done next because the healing of the lame man was a very big sign that of the power of Jesus working in Peter and John and hence they needed to do something about it they had to stop this so they ordered peter and john to come back to the court and they ordered them not to speak or teach in the name of jesus now what do you think did the apostles reply to this they replied you great men of the law must judge whether it is right to listen to you or to god but we cannot stop speaking about what we have seen and heard and about the lord jesus 
Now the chief priests threatened them to stop preaching, saying that they would be beaten and driven out of the temple. After saying this, they set the apostles free. So now outside the court, the people along with the lame man were praising God for what had happened to the lame man. That is, the lame man being healed. The whole crowd went with Peter and John and began praying for boldness and courage to tell all the nations about Jesus who came to give the message of salvation. King Herod and Pontius Pilate along with the Jews had crucified Jesus on the cross. But God had raised him from the dead and he is alive. Just then the place in which they were praying was shaken and they were filled with the Holy Spirit. They began to speak about Jesus with faith, hope and with love. The apostles did more signs and wonders and people even carried out the sick into the streets to be healed and many, many more were healed. So once again the apostles were arrested and put into prison. Now this was the second arrest of the apostles. The council now accused them of preaching and blaming the priests for the death of Jesus Christ. But Peter and the apostles were fearless and said that they would obey God rather than obey the council. So the council beat the apostles mercilessly and then let them go. But the apostles rejoiced that they were able to suffer for Jesus Christ and his kingdom. Now many of those who heard about the word believed and began to have faith in the name of Jesus Christ. Now because the apostles were convinced of the resurrection of Jesus, they proclaimed him Lord and God. They were filled with joy when they were arrested and whipped and beaten because of their faith in the name of Jesus Christ. So children, let us now prepare ourselves to listen to the word of God. Let us quieten ourselves. Let us sit straight, close our eyes and pay attention carefully. A reading from the book of Acts chapter 5 verses 40 to 42. They called in the apostles and had them whipped and ordered them not to speak again of Jesus the Savior. Then they set them free. The apostles went out from the council rejoicing that they were considered worthy to suffer disgrace for the sake of the name. Day after day, both in the temple and in people's homes, they continued to teach and to proclaim that Jesus was the Messiah. The Word of the Lord Let us continue to keep our eyes closed. Now let us silently speak to Jesus in our hearts. Let us speak to Jesus about the apostles, about how the apostles rejoiced in spite of all the painful beating 
they got. They were arrested, they were whipped, they were beaten. And yet, day after day, they continued to teach both in the temple and in people's homes. They continued to proclaim that Jesus Christ was the Messiah. Now let us reflect on the word of God. Why did the council beat the apostles? What did they order them to stop doing? Did the beating give pain to their bodies? Then why did the apostles rejoice? Would you like to imitate these apostles? Would you readily suffer pain for the sake of Jesus Christ? Would you have the courage to tell the truth even if a big bully in the class threatened to beat you up? As we reflect on this, let us together make a small prayer. Dear God, give us courage, for perhaps we lack it more than anything else. We need courage to fight against troubles, temptations, depression, and above all, fear. We need your help, dear God. Strengthen us with your love and your grace. Amen. You may gently open your eyes now. So children, I have an assignment for y'all for this lesson. You need to write down the answer to two of these questions. The first one. Who do you think was more courageous? Was it the apostles Peter and John or was it young Bernadette? And why do you think so? The second question. You need to write down an incident where you were courageous. It could be at school, it could be at play. You need to write down your moment of being courageous. Write it down. And we would love to read about it. So children, here's what we learned in today's class. We understood the story of young Bernadette and Our Lady of Lourdes. We saw how courageous young Bernadette was. Similarly, we saw the hardships the apostles had to face and how courageous the apostles were. Their trust and faith in the presence of the Holy Spirit in them was tremendous. So this was all for today's class. I hope you all enjoyed the class and I hope you all understood the lesson well. So until next Sunday, stay safe, stay healthy. God bless you all. Children, class is not over yet. We have a lovely action song for y'all. This is based on the book of Joshua, chapter 1, verses 9, which says, Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid, because God is always with you. So enjoy dancing and singing to this lovely song. Joshua 1, 9 Be strong and courageous. Do not be terrified. Do not be afraid. God is always with you.
Christmas plans fail. When all is well. God, you're always with me. 